you. It is 10.06 on the clock, and I have your host, James J. here. We had, At 10.30, we're going to be joined by Karen and Glenn, Glenna from the Park Place Adult Day Services. Looking forward to them joining us. Right now in studio, we have with us Wisconsin Rapids Mayor Shane Blazer. Good morning, Shane. Good morning, James. How good. are you? Doing good. How you been? I'm well, thanks. Good to have you here. Also good to have Taylor with us from Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. Good uh, shout out to them. Thanks for being here, Taylor. Appreciate the time. So, Mayor, uh, I, there's a couple of things I wanted to touch on today. Is there anything in, anywhere you wanted to start? Well, I heard some amazing singing in this uh, in the last program, <laughs> yeah. and uh, well, you don't have to worry about that with me. So, <laughs> no. All right. I, want, I, I will wanna, not be singing for you today, but I we'll leave it to leave the experts. The, you know, do want to leave the door open if you did want to do some jamming. That you know, just make sure because we don't always have to talk about city things. We can always jam too. Uh, great to have you here. So let's let's start off on a really high note here. Uh, did you get to catch any of the Rafter game last night? I did not catch okay. any of the All Rafters right. game. I All watched right. the Brewers game, but I didn't right catch on. any of the Rafters right game. On. Yeah, uh, Rafters rolling along, and uh, they're certainly going to continue to hopefully keep winning. Got a game tonight, and uh, when we win tonight, which I am guaranteeing, we are going to win. Uh, we got the game championship game coming in. Now, this has been fun, and uh, you and I are baseball fans. Um, we enjoy having the Rafters in town like the River Kings. Mm -hmm. um, there is another level to this, too, the economy impact that oh, these absolutely. teams make. And I don't think we really get a chance to really talk, uh, take up, talk about that or look at that very often. And many of us are, aren't kind of behind the scenes, if you will, to know that. So I don't, need, I don't necessarily want to talk dollars and cents so much. But just from your perspective, what you see uh, from your angle of things, the impact having the River Kings, having the rafters in this area, the, the Red Hawks, having these teams in town here, uh, what that does for our economy, what that does for our, our community. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, first for the community, it's amazing for us as residents to be able to see those levels of uh, playing, and because yeah. uh, it's a different level, it's it's beyond high school, and um, it adds a layer of excitement and more opportunities to catch a sport. And then locally, you know, it's great for us because a lot of these teams that come to town have traveling fans with them too. So you know, they're in our community. Um, you know, they're spending money in our community. They're you know, taking part in those activities, which is good for a community. It's also good to see, uh, you know, people in the community, you know, the growth of uh, people around here and that activity is always fun. Yeah. You always notice when A Street's a little busier than, yeah. than other times and you think, well, I wonder what's going on tonight. I think for many of us, uh, longer time, longer term residents uh, of the area, I know when uh, me and my family, we first moved here, we were blown away uh, when the summer hit and we had the Wisconsin State Water Ski Show oh, uh, yeah. tournament. We didn't know about this, that mm -hmm. this was held in this area and everything. And we find out right away, oh yeah, it's tradition. Yeah, we've been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a big deal, but people are used to it and everything. And we know uh, the impact that can make and has made oh, for absolutely. years and everything. It, um, I, I'll never, one of the first thoughts that we had when we first moved here, why are there so many hotels? Like, it's weird to see so many hotels. But you understand why, because of the water skate show tournament and things like that that uh, we're able to host here. Mm -hmm. And not every city has some uh, unique opportunity to be able to have these kind of things. How do you and your staff look to, uh, like, take advantage of those, for lack of a better way to put it, even more so going forward? Well, I think it even comes more down to the community and uh, visitors and conventions bureau and the heart of Wisconsin and those event type planning. Um, you know, with the Gulf coming next summer, mm -hmm. you know that's that's really we're going to really see an impact here because Stevens Point in that area can't handle the influx. So, so uh, we're going to see that influx here, and it's and it's trying to maybe coordinate some events around those events that. Mm -hmm. You know, people after golf time or if they want to take a break from golf, they go. They can go to a different event. And so it's trying to manage those coordination of those efforts. Hmm. Uh, and, and I imagine, you know, it's also it, it's such a team effort, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with, with the chamber, with yourself, with other community members. And really, it starts with the community, mm -hmm. letting, letting the chamber, letting you, letting people know, hey, these are the kind of events we're looking for. Or, hey, this is what we're thinking or anything. Because I imagine it, many more times than not, a lot of the best ideas start that way, you know, coming from them. Mm -hmm. So it, it, that's something else to, to keep in mind to the audience out there. Oh, absolutely. I uh, wanted to ask about the Wisconsin uh, Rapids Fire Department's uh, ribbon cutting. I know that that took place on the 13th. How did that go? Uh, it went very well. You know, wish we, as we talked that day, wish we didn't have the sprinkles in the rain. Yeah. yeah. But they uh, moved everything inside, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a great addition to the community for the for the people, the employees, and staff over there, um, and the services they're going to provide and continue to provide. But it's 
it's such an improvement from what they had. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I personally was embarrassed. Um, so, you know, there's, it's more modern and it's where it should be for professional organization. And, and they should be set there for, for hopefully a few decades. Yeah. And, yeah. But yeah, it was a great event. Uh, there was, there was quite a few people there and, um, it was, people just enjoyed themselves. And and not to put you on the spot, because eh, we know you're not a fireman necessarily. <laughs> you, got, you wear a lot of hats and have worn a lot of hats in your career, but uh, that's not one of them for what I remember. Uh, but I actually was a volunteer firefighter. Were, I, knew, I knew as soon as I said it. I'm like, wait a minute, he was, yeah, wasn't I, he? Yeah, Darn yeah. it. No. Uh, it. Well, yeah, okay. So, that, yeah, I will definitely put you on the spot. Here, so. yep. <laughs> no, what um, you, you say that there were some improvements done to the building. Uh, what were some of those? Uh? So, there's, uh, so a, a big safety factor was... Uh, with, especially with firefighters, it's carcinogens from fires. And so now they have a decontamination area. They Because before they had to, when there was fires, they'd be walking through their living quarters. And, you know, those things could, you know, be left around yeah, there. So, yeah. so now they have a, a decontamination area where they can come in, they can take a steam shower um, and to hopefully clear out their pores. And then they can leave all their gear in that area for, um, laundering, and then they can they keep lockers right there with a change of clothes in it, and then they can go back into the living area. And so they really keep they really have done a good job of keeping those two areas separate, the living mm. and the workspace, because they do live there for two days. Yeah. And so that was a huge improvement. And there's some meeting spaces there now that um, you know I've gone over there and they're doing training, uh, especially on the medical side. They'll do training there, and then. Um, any presentations can be done there. So th- there's so many improvements there. And then, then having their own living space, like a little dorm yeah. room that they each get their own space where they can close the door and, um, which was better than the kind of the dorm setting they had before. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it also feels like, uh, cause I'm with you, uh, on the embarrassment part. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, especially when it comes to uh, our firefighters. Uh, it's it's. I, I would feel that way about uh, you know. It's we've talked about it with Sheriff Becker about the jail and things. I feel very mm-hmm. similar to those. But with this one, it, it really stings uh, when we're, we're talking about a volunteer position so much. Uh, so much of it is based on that. And and I, I don't make light of any any faculty, any government position that is giving and doing so much. There is something about firefighters to me, and I think a lot of people out there, where what can we do to help them? What can we do to do make their job easier, safer, any of these things? If this is one of those things, uh, you know, uh, sal- salut. That's wonderful. Yep. You know, and I, I always try to, you know, not say one department is more important than another department because right, right. they all provide a very important service to the community. And you know, I look at kind of the, I look at kind of the fire department settled now, you know, and. But, you know, you look at our street department, part of that building is from the 1940s. Mm. And so, you know, we have other assets in the community that are, start, that are kind of a hit end of life and end of age. And, and those are very important that uh, we also look at making sure those are, are kept up and brought up to date. And, you know, because with all our street guys making our roads and plowing streets and, you know, we, we'd come to a standstill in the community. And mm. our police and fire services wouldn't be able to get anywhere without, uh, you know, those assets being um, maintained and kept up. I always like to ask people, especially when people bring up uh, paying taxes or anything, could you imagine your city running uh, efficiently without said this, without one of these things, like any of that that you mentioned, and I can't. There's nothing that I can think of that, well, all these are integral. Oh, we need this. We need that. So, you know, yeah, let, let's do it. Let's do what we got to do to make sure that we keep these things. Yeah, and that's probably one of the toughest jobs being on the council is trying to prioritize those things and then funding them. And because, yeah, when you look at it as a group, there might be some things that personally some people might have a stronger interest in versus another, but they're all important in some factor. And, and it's really coming down to, you know, with tight budgets and trying to be responsible with your budgets, it's, well, which which are the priorities that we really need to fund and which are maybe a little extra, mm-hmm. but they're still important. That's the problem. Well, and, and as we're learning more and more going forward in society, everything really bleeds into each other. Mm-hmm. Everything's connected. And mm-hmm. and when you're, especially when you're in such a, a, a tight community and a, a smaller community, it, that happens even more uh, often. So it, it can't be an easy decision to make, can't be a very, you know, uh, easy for you, the council. Right. Even met- the public, though, you know, you can ask 10 different people and they'll give you 10 different answers of what their priority is. And yep. so, you know, it really comes down to it. You know, we, 
we've discussed like large um, bulk item pickup, like couches and things that we used to pick up when we went to the new garbage service, we no longer pick up, but mm. there's still a need out there. But, but is the need worth funding, you know, right. or taking right. funds from something, some other need to fund that. And that really gets to be a, a difficult decision at a time. I think that's the part that um, <clears throat> many of us don't consider very often that uh, I, I think about this all the time with sports. You know, you, you, you want this guy and your team. Okay, well, who's going? Right. Or, or when we come up with our top five list, top, top eight greatest of all time at this position. Okay, you want to put this guy in, but who are you taking out? Right. Uh, so that's the, that is has almost the toughest part of this, I would imagine, being is, is what where what part of the pie chart to take out of. Yeah, because there is only a so big of a pie, yeah. and so yeah, that's the council at budget time. That's the biggest struggle is mm. you know trying because you just can't take more because it, it costs money, yeah. and then you mm. got to be financially responsible. We're speaking with Wisconsin Rapids Mayor Shane Blazer, and we have our friends uh, Taylor from Wisconsin Rapids Community Media in with us as well. Uh, Mayor, we, we touched on a little bit of uh, talking around construction a bit, sort of. Uh, <laughs> no pun intended there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but how's the construction been going? Good. You know, our, our construction crew are, are forging ahead, and they're doing a great job. And uh, last I heard, they were ahead of schedule. Um, and then the Jackson Street project is a, kind of a project outside the city. And kind of watching from my window, you know, I, yesterday I watched them pour, like, the outer edge of the mm-hmm. roundabout, the concrete portion. So they're very close to starting asphalt, I heard, maybe this week. And so phase one will be closer to completion, then they'll open up Jackson Street and have to close down the section behind the police department at Grand Avenue. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to we're gonna have to jockey around traffic a little bit, but then they'll finish that, that section to the expressway. Hmm. And, and that should be done this fall. When it comes to um, <clears throat> choosing uh, or deciding which roads you're working on or any of that, we've talked about that a couple of times. But I, I, I've always been curious, is one of the factors um, the 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 round away the way we get around these things and stuff like okay well this one this time of year it'll be easier for people to get around here we'll do it then and of course we also know that it's in Wisconsin so we only have so much amount of time to be able to get this stuff done yep our, our construction crew has a capacity of a certain amount of amount of road uh, footage they can do and yeah and they they crank it out but um, yeah it really comes down to factors of age of infrastructure the water the sewer storm sewer or storm system and then ride quality is another factor mm-hmm. and so so all those kind of come together in a spreadsheet and um, then they kind of determine priorities of that road uh, the roads by then that's how they choose how they're going to fix them and then and then when we we do that mill and overlay program and which is being expanded is just for ride quality aj infrastructure is great um, it has a, quite a few years left and that's when we do the mill and overlay and uh, hopefully improve the ride quality because mm-hmm. there are a number of roads that we definitely need to improve the ride quality on. And, and hopefully with uh, how we're using funds and doing things that we'll be able to expand on our mill and overlay and get some more of that done. Unfortunately, uh, we'll never get away from the pea gravel, though. We no, always, no. We always seem to do is that as our maintenance. And yeah. We get to enjoy pea gravel. <laughs> Um, as we're uh, getting close, and I, I hate to be the, uh, the messenger on this one, as we're getting close to the end of summer here, um, mm-hmm. were there, uh, as far, do you, I know we have a winter budget, if you will, as far as, you know, winter activities, winter mm-hmm. needs. Uh, is, is there a summer budget, and is there, is, how has that looked this, uh, this year? So, yeah, really our summer budget is formulated on estimates of road construction, mm-hmm. and then, you know, they, they go through and there's a there's an estimated budget for road maintenance for the, the pea graveling. And then they do catch basin repairs. And so that's all um, Paul Vollard, the street superintendent, he, you know, he, uh, that's quite a task that he puts yeah. together yeah. and tries to estimate the work that can be done and, and how much that's going to cost based on estimates. Mm-hmm. And everything's going well. Good. Very good to hear. There hasn't been any... Any emergencies or any projects such as last summer, I think it was last summer, when we had to redo part of A Street because the yeah. culvert was collapsing. And that was kind of a, one of those projects that had to be done. I think it was maybe two summers ago, but had to be done and it wasn't something planned and kind I of think, went forward. I think you might be right. I think it might be two summers yeah, ago. It, it, it does not feel like it. I know. Every, time is a flat circle. Mm-hmm. It really it doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. It really doesn't. There are no days of the week anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so we haven't had any of those kind of like emergency projects show up this summer yet. Hmm, good to hear.
Um, when it comes to the jail, how is that progressing? Things on time with that? As I know we're, we were last time we talked with Sheriff Becker about mm -hmm. it. Uh, we're still looking for uh, people who were uh, throwing out bids. Yep. So that's why I believe they're still in the bid bid phase. Okay. And uh, but everything we have we, we have worked uh, the city and the county have worked very well together on this project, and uh, um, and that was very smooth, and there wasn't really any hiccups and. So that aspect of it went well, and so yeah, now it's just kind of waiting to see what uh, the bids come in as, and you know, given the times. But it's a necessity; it's something that we need, and, and unfortunately, unfortunately, we need it. But uh, um, it needs to be done, and it's long overdue for yeah. needing to get done. It's um, you know, I I, I like that uh, where we are with this now, where it's no longer a debate, or it's about do we need it, should we get it, all these things. It's it's in place. We already have agreed to do this. Now it's. Um, you're seeing the community come around on this one. Anybody who wasn't already there, because I, 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 you know, we, you know better than I do, but I dealt with this topic quite a bit over the last couple of years doing this show, and uh, I never necessarily heard horrible negative feedback about it. It was more questions. Yeah. I think those questions got answered. I think you and everybody else that have been a part of this have done a really good job of being transparent about it. So that kind of clears up a lot of that. You know, you know, I think the only feedback I really heard was maybe not the most ideal location in the downtown you know even though it's been always there that maybe could we move it somewhere else but you know for logistics and courtrooms uh, it mm -hmm. just makes sense that the two are together and, and in that space there it just was I there works. was there any i do too i agree with you yeah. uh was there talk of, of of possibly moving it so in the past, there had been discussions on hmm. some other locations, Interesting. but the logistics becomes if you don't have a sheriff's department and a jail together with the courthouse, well, then you have the logistics of transporting people back and forth. Right. And they really need to be connected, and it's really kind of a, a collaborative kind of effort between the two. The, I mean, the number one reason behind this safety, certainly, uh, mm -hmm. for, for our, right. our, our attendees, our, uh, uh, the uh, in, inmates, but, you know, I'm thinking of the people that are running the jail and that and our officers and all that, of course. Absolutely. But uh, there, there is the other, the economic impact that this was taking, that it was, it was ticking, at, you know, chipping away at us here with this uh, for a long time. Yeah. Once this is up and running, should counter that a lot more, and and so we'd kind of be shooting ourselves in the foot a little bit here if we, if we didn't have it in the location that it is in. Yeah, and you know, and in, in, in our current situation, it's roughly about a million dollars a year the county spends to <laughs> to transport people and house them in other locations, and you know, at, at some point it just becomes cost prohibitive, and yeah. you really need to look at maybe doing something different as as we're doing here. Uh, what about um, bringing uh, businesses in and that? How has that been going? Has there been any uh, new uh, new uh, discoveries with that? So, yeah, there's always uh, Kyle Kearns, or as if you've met before, is, uh, mm -hmm. he's always working with developers, talking with developers, reaching out to developers. And, and you know, housing is a huge thing for us here. And, um, you know, so some of that. And then uh, also we always get inquiries, whether they're kind of just, Hey, what can you give us information on this? Or can you, if we get this certain size building, where do you have locations? So it's all kind of just you know testing the waters and seeing yeah. what's out there, and and we respond to them all, and uh, always more than happy to help work with people. And you know, as everybody, you know, we're shop what we keep talking about, and mm -hmm. kind of waiting and seeing there what's going to happen there. But I'm pretty confident something will be happening there. And, Good to hear. Mm -hmm. and, and it has been nice, though, I'll say, in the meantime, that it seems like that air, that spot and uh, that parking lot has been able to be used. Mm -hmm. It's been great to see business, nonprofits, a lot of people using that area. Yeah, you know, the, they just had the car crews there. And it yeah, was, yeah. Well, I never heard a count on the cars, but uh, it was phenomenal. It was, in, yeah, I'm glad we didn't have, <laughs> I, I'm glad I didn't have to count them, yeah, that's for was, sure. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah, it was a very well-attended event, and it was great to see, but yeah, you know, the, the owner of the the property there has been um, more than happy to kind of help, mm. uh, you know, Good share him. share the parking lot. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I always like to take uh, you know opinions and questions from our audience mm -hmm. uh, for you or in any of our representative guests. You know, yep. Teston, Crew, Kind, Sh Shanklin, anybody that comes in. So I always encourage everybody to do that. Uh, we don't get many questions though from animals and i got a question from one of the dogs out there listening i want to thank you for that thank you but the dog park i have to bring that up uh any progress on that any developments on that so yeah we talked about this briefly last night at common council and 
so the last thing we're we're kind of waiting to find out, uh, getting the ruling on if there's any wetlands in there. So mm. so once we get that ruling, then we'll know if that's a really a viable spot. And then, um, you know, it's heavily wooded right now, and mm. it's got a lot of um, windfall in there. And so it's a it's a good winter project for our our street department, our parks department to work on uh, mm. clearing out that. Yeah. So. So, and then budget time, we're coming into budget time, and then so we'll kind of kind of work on some budgetary numbers for, for the Park and Rec Commission and ultimately the council. It feels like only a matter of time kind of thing. It, it, a community our size is just unimaginable that we don't have a dog park, and, and how we got here is how we got here, but we definitely need to have a dog park yeah, here and yeah. a location for, for maybe some dog events and those type of things for our, our four-legged friends. And it's only, um, again, you know, to anybody out there that don't care about dogs or any of that, I know you care about your economy. I know you care about your taxes. Mm -hmm. And it is something that I've, I've talked about quite a bit. And it's not just me. It's, it's the Warren Buffetts of the world. It's the people that actually know what they're talking about, not just me repeating what these people are saying. If there is a consistency we see throughout the whole world in communities growing and surviving, it is dogs, like yeah. being dog friendly. It seems silly, but it comes back to that a lot. So it's yeah. an it has an economic impact and importance, too. Yeah, and it's, it's, Kyle always says it's about creating that sense of place. And, yeah. you know, people want to live here. People want to go enjoy dog parks and have coffee and, you know, be with other dog people and... Yeah, it's all part of the community. Yeah, and it has it's such a well. Dog parks are certainly not just ours. It's such a Midwest there thing, you know. It, it just feels like it belongs to us in some ways. So, it, it, you know, we we deserve one. Uh, the dogs deserve one. And it's nice to hear that it is coming around to that uh, part mm -hmm. of this. It's cool. I did want to wrap up on this, um, and I encourage people to go to uh, on their Facebook page to follow the city's uh, Facebook page. Mm -hmm. It's a great follow, great way to keep up on things in your community and also construction updates and those things. Uh, one of the things I came across, and we talked on this a little bit, you guys uh, in the next couple of months are going to be recruiting uh, for Ethics Board, Water Works and Lighting Commission, Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, what should people know about those kind of the, these positions uh, being on these uh, in this field? Yeah, so um, Waterworks and Lake Commission, that's a council appointment. Um, one of the commission spots opens up every year on their rotation. Um, it's a five-year commitment, but, you know, that's what that's how long the term is. And, mm -hmm. and so if you have an interest in water and, and light and the operation and the utility, that's that's one option. Um, the Ethics Board, they, they kind of handle um, maybe ethic complaints with the city. I have not heard of one in a long time, mm -hmm. but uh, they meet a couple times a year. So depending on, you know, Water and Light's uh, more of a time commitment. Ethics Board's not very much of a time commitment. Um, Board of Zoning Appeals is when they need a meeting, mm -hmm. they have they schedule a meeting. So mm -hmm. th that just kind of depends. But, but yeah, we're always looking for potential people interested in positions, and we have positions open up throughout the year on different committees and commissions and so yeah, we that was, that was the best way we found that we can try to recruit people and instead of myself cold calling people I know and trying to strong arm them <laughs> into filling a committee. <laughs> kind of like they did to you about the mayor position, right? I mean, I don't, yeah, I think yeah, a lot of us kind of get uh, turnarounds. Fair yeah, play, kind of I mean. volunteered that hey, you need to do this kind of thing, but uh, but yeah, it just saves me from having to do that. And I want to find people interested in these areas and and people wanting to interest in maybe to serve the community and. And they can kind of determine about the time they have available, and there could be a committee or commission that's uh, could be available for them. And forgive me because I don't like doing this to people, but to put you on the spot for oh, yeah. a second, you are a, a, a perfect example of this. Where uh, you, you, this is not something that you necessarily wanted to do or saw yourself doing, being the mayor of town, but. It's something that you saw a need to, you felt uh, you had uh, a pulling to, you had a literal pulling to by friends and people mm -hmm. and stuff also. And look where look where we are now, where uh, the city is thriving, things are going much uh, a good in a good direction, and I think that you are a big part of that. Um, we encourage people out there, because now this is just me talking here, not Shane or, or the city or anything like that. I get awfully tired of people barking and not doing a darn thing. Just bark, 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 but they won't get off their couch or they won't actually vote on something or actually go out there and be informed or anything like that. We want you to be involved in these things and get and get engaged. And one of the ways you can is being on these boards or any uh, some of these fields that you uh, you know certainly see an opening for. Yeah, I, yeah, I lovingly call them people uh, keyboard haters. You know, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. you know, it's easy to set a keyboard and and spew stuff without solutions. And and yeah, you need to get involved and. and bring forth solutions. I take calls all the time and I, 
you know, people that have concerns. And, you know, I try to pull out of them, you know, what do you see as a solution? And, um, yeah, so it's a struggle. But we, uh, you know, words are great. Words are awesome. I I make a living on words. Mm -hmm. But uh, action is what gets stuff Mm -hmm. done. And we need you to, you know, if you want to be a part of these things, now is the time. encourage you to go to wirapids.org to find out more about that. Uh, Mayor, if people want to reach you, how can they do that? Go on to uh, the website there? Yeah, go on to the website. Call my office phone, uh, 421-8202, and track us down. We're available. Sounds good. Uh, A big shout-out to uh, Taylor and all of our friends at Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. Appreciate you guys. Uh, Be sure to go to your YouTube page, type in Wisconsin Rapids Community Media, subscribe to the page, keep up to date on all the great work that they're doing over there. And, uh, again, thank you so much for joining us, Shane. Always good talking with you. I always enjoy it, too. We'll talk again next month. Thank you. Stick around. we got more Morning Magazine coming up for you right here on WFHR, locally grown radio.